So this is a uh, corn room. So yesterday we'll be doing kagero tempo farm premium. Yes, yes. Let's. So Becky first. Starter is Conroe. Why Conroe? Because he's a good guy. 2011 OG. Literally, Carnabas one, find any great ones. And the great ones are in this deck are very helpful. Okay, wait, why, why, did not, why did not use the B starter? What's wrong with you? To be honest, I don't even know. This is now, first grade 3 line up. We play 3 the cross. Why not 4? Because really, 3 is enough. You only need to ride him basically once. Now you could play 4 if you want to focus heavily on the progenitor dragon but 3 is enough and you have a lot of searches for your overlord. Mm -hmm. Next is your 4 the ends. So this just works well with your cross, literally the main card you want to use. And having 4 copies is basically a must. That's so a must. Yeah, you need yeah. to dedicate your whole entire life to your entire exactly. wallet to this. Exactly. It's okay, it, it's okay it you're playing 3 with the cross, it's really okay you're playing 3 with the cross. Because you can search it with whatever else later. You can use it in strike order, you can do a lot with it. Yes. Now this is a bit of an odd one. We play two of the orders from Overdress. I, I forgot what it's called. It's a... Uh... Best Harvest. Best. Oh yeah, right. How can you remember that? Whatever. So basically it's skill. It's basically once you play, uh, for every card retired during the main phase, you draw one. Now why this is really good? Is because with Zambas in your G zone, you get to retire the whole field. So let's say you have two of these in hand, or maybe like an N or a lot of great threes, just use them to strike, go Zambas, your opponent, play in your order, and draw five. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very nice. Yes, if not, you can literally use this for a discard for order or just for striding. Yeah. Next, move on to the great twos. You play four inner ropes. Now, this is basically also a mask. Your main cut, your main boss is the cross. And basically, ignore skill. What it says is that whenever it's placed, look at the top seven and search out for a cross for free. You don't need to do any, the any cross. shenanigans, any counter blast, nothing. It's just a free effect. And the second skill is whenever your vanguard attacks, if you have four or less hand cards, he plus 5k. And with the cross, this synergizes synergize really well because the cross basically counts any effect that uses your hand size as zero. So you can what you do, soul in the end, attack three times. If you have this on your rear card, it's a 25k base. <laughs> it's a little well, you know, to your opponent. Next. I'm gonna have to cut a lot of that. <laughs> I'm gonna have to cut a lot of that. <laughs> Next is a support card, storage cannon. So his skill is once per turn or on act phase or main phase. Counter blast one, send a normal unit from your drop zone back to the deck, retire one unit, and if you have four or less hand cards, retire one. Eh, draw one. Again, the cross does God's work and draws you a card every single time you use the skill if it's on <laughs> Vanguard. It's once per turn though. It's once per turn. However, it gives you a lot of value. And with, even though it costs a counter charge, you can easily recycle that with Conro. Next is a bit of an odd one, we have Striken. Now, I blocked this for the old Striken because I can't find it for some reason. And why you don't play the V Striken is because it costs a counter blast. And most of the time, uh, if you are going second, uh, you usually use that counter blast for your starter Conro to search out whatever great one you want to use. And your opponent might try to damage deny you, and then you can't use striker skills, which is ass. So also the old striker, it gives you a defensive measure. Basically, whenever you don't, an opponent doesn't boost his attack, it becomes a 15k base. So you don't need to use as many hand cards to guard, which is nice. Next is a, it's a bit of an odd one. We have. The Garan and Doha couple. Look at the that couple themselves. Oh. Now you okay. Usually you see this in Blade Master decks is literally like the support card in there. But why we play this is because we have so much counter charge like utility from Conro that you might as well play this. So basically what Garan skill or Doha I forgot his name. Is when it's placed counter blast one and call the great one. 
to any rear guard circle, of course you want to call it behind it. And if he has no if your opponent has no rear guards, uh your opponent cannot use normal units to guard this attack. And Garan, uh if it boosts Doha, is that way right? I forgot the name lah, but basically this guy boosts this guy. Oh yeah, the name is Doha. If the attack hits, you can't blast one, draw one, and soul charge one. So that's just a nice resource card. Because in this deck you do use quite a bit of soul blast, but you don't have much soul charge. And what's nice about this is that the first skill basically says uh if your opponent has no real guards, it plus 5k. Now this doesn't have to boost Doha to get the plus 5k. So let's say your opponent has no real guards, you can just call this down, that's a 13k booster, which is nice. Mm -hmm. right. Moving on to the great ones, we have three Conros. This is a general Conro. Mm. This is your best great one basically in the entire deck. Basically. So it's first skill, when you call it the real guard, you can reveal a great three from hand. To search out any card with Overlord in his name, add it to your hand, and then discard one. So this is literally your uh, cross searcher in case Ignorote doesn't work. Yeah, basically. And his second skill is the main skill. So basically, if, on your Overlord Vanguard, what you do, you call this guy down, and you retire him. So when he's retired, he gives your Vanguard the skill. Whenever it attacks, counter charge too. So your cross can stand up can stand up to three times which means you can counter charge six times so literally like let's say like oh you got three damage spend all of them call your doha call your garans your use your toric cannon to retire your opponent and get resources just like discard for them and just use conro and then recycle all of that and that's why we also play the starter because this guy can literally search out this whenever you want which is absolutely not like. It's just the entire group one has on this side. He's nice. He's very nice. Now next is also a bit of an odd one. You play Saber Dragon Hill. Now this is your main right target. So on its skill on Vanguard is whenever it hits, draw one. So you just fuck. <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> okay. So basically, why this is so good? is because uh, your opponent either has to allow you to plus one or he has to minus one from hand to try to guard this attack. Yeah, so you can call, so you can write this, put out your starter conro at the back, and it becomes a 13k attack. So he has to guard at least 10. Yeah, it's, then, it's, it's really annoying. I mean like, as a person playing against this deck every single time, this one draw kind of makes me want to regret not guarding. Really, it really exactly. does. And the second effect is just kind of... It's kind of... It's kind of ass. It's like you just play. Oh, no, no. But for some reason, this guy, this, this man, literally just keeps on drawing to this guy's back. <laughs> Even though I, I, I don't know why. Copies. I don't know why. Like, just, maybe you don't have to play this because you're never going to write it when you're playing too. But this guy just but, does it. This guy just does it. But if, if you do play this, you can... And if you draw them after your first grade one turn, you can just use them as like, discard for the one card. Next is 3 ammo. This is your main booster. So... Uh, his first skill is whenever it boosts, it plus 3k. That's it. At literally no cost, nothing. It's just an 11k booster. And its second skill, you don't really use it that often. But it's whenever you retire something. This also works on your turn. Retire this, you draw one and counter charge. So let's say um, you have two heal triggers in hand, but only one counter charge. So I do. Use your denial chicken. Retire one. Retire this guy, counter charge, and you do it again. Yes, like, there's some synergy there. Do it again. So you, you absolutely retire your, your opponent's life. Yeah. Also, not, 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 not to mention, the 11 boosted, uh, if it boosts your other cost, it basically hits 24, it's kind of like a, quite above the magic numbers. That's good. And you can make something happen with this later. We'll get to that later. Later! Well, we play two of the overdress PG. Now why? Because this says uh, where if you if you were to guard with this, if you have two or less hand cards, it's basically a free PG. You don't need to guard. And with the cross, who counts your hand size as zero for everything, it's literally a free PG every time, which is really nice. It's 
Yes. And the good thing about this is that it's a great one. And you know what that means? <laughs> the counter was coming in. Yeah, uh, this, yeah, if you can already tell, um, this can counter charge your condo. This can counter charge your condo. So your condo is basically just cost it. It kind of it's just searches you a really, really nice. great one. And search this, and search whatever the crap. It's really, it's really, it's, your great one is really in, in your hands. Yeah, it's straight exactly. up in your hands. That's why you play the old condo instead of the V1. Next trigger lineup, obviously we play the Dragon Empire Over Trigger, which stands your Vanguard. And let me just tell you, this is the absolute cheese. Like you have no idea just how just how salty I make opponents. I literally on my for example you go cross, attack first, over trigger, bam, you have, you have four attacks on 100 million. It's it's uh it's really, it's it's really bad because the thing is that you didn't already notice. Yes, you do drive chat a lot in this deck, and so checking this is super easy. It's so it's easy. So very easy. It's so easy. It's so Which easy. Which is really nice. Yeah. Next, we play four crits. Now, why I play the normal crits? Because I can't find the premium collection ones. New hits. They keep on getting sold out. So you can change this to. The the 2019 on the one that goes inside. Right, please uh, change it if you can. Next is the other premium collection grids, the Strike Faller. So basically in this deck, you just go ham, so that's why you play 8 crits. Yes. Now why I don't play like 12 crits or anything, is because you do need some guard power in this deck, which is why we play 3 draw triggers, and also just to complete our PG lineup. Because the meta right now does a lot of big attacks unless you're playing against like gold paladins or royals then okay I guess you just need to a lot of small cards nah, but, but, royals don't do shit to the PG royals yeah. Yeah. but the good thing about this <laughs> is that <laughs> these draw triggers draw you uh, discard for, the, for your cross and every, like, every, anything else and the nice thing with this deck that since you drive track so much, you can literally filter your hand like a shit ton. Yes. Next, obviously the four heals. Now I only play two heal guards because I can't find the other two, which is annoying. Very annoying. And that's basically it. So we play a standard trigger lineup: it crits, uh, three draws, four heals, and one over trigger. Your next is the G zone. What, what sleeves are there? Show me it's the, the sleeves. It's the overlord sleeves because I had extra. And I just put it on. Now the first 4G units, you don't really use them or anything. I just use them as G flip fodder. The ace, you could use it, but this is not, it's just once this in is, a blue This move. is not. This so is you not. just these four cards are just my G flip fodder. The first strike we have is Zen Bust. So his skill basically says uh, once per turn, uh, during your main phase, uh, G flip and retire your opponent's whole field. So like I said earlier, you can play your order card and if your opponent has like 3, 4, maybe a full field, you can literally plus like 5 hand cards for free. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's something to be feared. Exactly, so your opponent can't call a full board down or else you Oh yeah, you, you, you have to remember that uh, this guy also passes 10k to a full back row. For and every a, a very great three or greater card. Yeah. So basically uh, it does 10k to itself. So you got ammo in the back, it's a 49k attack, so it's a bit better thing. And uh, will force out. Oh yeah, and also this whole full field retire is like for free. Like, and you also flip out one. This is for free, so it gets gets you your GD, which is really nice. Next we have the legend himself, premium collection, Dungeon Valor. So this guy is just a really good card. Why? Because let's say your opponent just got done with a huge S turn, you have to use like all your PGs. And then this dude, his first skill says counter blast one, G flip anything, retire um, an opponent's rear guard. Mm -hmm. And basically he gets 15k power for every sentinel in your drop zone. Yes. So literally just 15k right off the bat. Uh, just not, not the cut uh, King Lama here, but uh, together with this, you can make 69. 
69k bro is that not right my friend <laughs> is that not right you can make 69k you know, you know, okay. your cross has a base power of 13k add this as 28 let's say you have 2 pgs you have 58 plus 11 that's 69 you can 69 your opponent to death how amazing is that and another good thing about him which is the main thing is his second skill which is once per turn throughout the whole turn if your opponent were to drop a G guard or Sentinel, this dude stands and minus only one drive. Yeah, this is yeah, unless I don't know, there's some random deck that can like use normal units. No, no, trigger and normal units to just guard everything, which is not very possible. Exactly. I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so then this is very free. Also plus two, you need plus two from this, right? Exactly. So yeah. it's literally like a free plus five. And this is literally hitting for sixty nine k numbers. Your opponent is either going to have to drop like three to five handcuffs just to try to hard guard this, mm -hmm. or he'll just have to PG twice, which yeah. is wasting a lot of resources for your opponent. Yes. So that's why we play, which is really good. Next, we have the legend himself, Ziegenberg OG. Now, why we play him? SP. Indeed, I scared my friend out of this. You don't want to know the story, but it's not that hilarious. <laughs> So why we play him is because he can be a free re-stander. So basically his first kill, you don't really use it that often but it says once per turn, soul blast, uh, flip, persona flip himself and retire a rear guard. Now you want to keep your soul blast for your cross or anything else but let's say your opponent has no field and you G guard at once then like okay why not let's plus, let's plus some hand. Attack with him, plus 1 hand cuts. Yeah. Now why plus 1 hand cuts? Because of his second skill, which is counter plus 1 after this unit attacks, it is blazing. Um, discard as many hand cuts as your opponent's open rear guard circles. So with your uh, Thoric cannons, you can, let's say you just finished guarding a whole bunch on your opponent's turn, call on your Thoric cannon, plus 1. Uh, retire your opponent's rear guard so that's one less hand card you have to discard and most of the time this guy is literally a free restander mm -hmm. for only one counter blast but you can recycle that counter that counter blast is counter really easily like literally all the time it's yeah. so so good uh, but I don't know uh, they both had the uh, both Zygenberg and Dark and Dark Jin they both have the counter blazing skill Wait, does Zygerberg need to uh, apply a blazing to activate skill? Yeah, it does. Okay, the, the, the same, same for, uh, same for Damjit. That's the wrong one. Right, what is this? <laughs> same for Damjit. Uh, Damjit also needs to hit blazing for his pre-stand skill, right? Pre-stand? No, yeah. to, to get the... Uh, oh wait, no, yeah. It's to stand this blazing music. Yeah. My bad. Yeah. Alright. Yeah, so just keep in mind, you need to actually blaze. But most of the time, you're gonna... You're, you're, gonna, you're gonna blaze. Because this deck does have... Some retire shit. Next is the progenitor dragon. We play him just for fun. Now his skill is basically counter blast two, soul blast one, and he plus 10k. And he gets the ability to attack everything, all your opponent's units. And whenever he hits, I'm gonna charge one. Yes. So basically, with your ignorant roads, you're most likely going to get a duplicate cross. And if you link draw to your striker, or maybe. Uh, any other strike isn't that good at the moment you can go to Gale Gale and get free strikes for the rest of the turn so there, there are games where you go to dump it like three times or twice so having this dude in your g-zone flipped up and being able to strike dump it for free is really nice mm -hmm. so that's just why I play Progenical Dragon we don't use him that often but it's kind of like a Zamba's but yeah but you need to pay the cost now. You need to pay the cost, but it recycles yeah, the counter charge cool. anyways. Next on the G guards, we have the man himself, Duffy. Yeah. Well, wow. it's an English version because I couldn't find a Japanese, which sucks. Anyways, his skill is basically uh, when your opponent's grade 3 or greater Vanguard attacks your Overlord Vanguard, counter plus 1, send 2 Overlord, eh, grade 3 or greater Flame Dragons. On the drop to the bottom of the deck and retire your opponent's back row. Yes. So this guy can help recycle your overlords together with your Thoric cannons. And it's just a really good uh, G-Guard because it retires your opponent's boosters. 
And keep in mind, if you guard with this on the Vanguard, retire the back row, the booster behind the Vanguard is retired, so the Vanguard loses that power. <laughs> you fools. And next is uh, Legend himself, Denial Chicken. I would play 3 of this if I can find the last one because it's so good and basically it still is when this is placed on Giga Circle you can carve last one and retire the attacking rear guard so this only works on rear guards and it makes you wonder why they even gave it a 15k shoot in the first place <laughs> but <laughs> let's say your opponent got I don't know over trigger or something and your opponent thinks aha uh -huh, over trigger I'm gonna freeze this dude off nah denial chicken retire that shit is literally like a free PG when it comes down to rear guards. It is a PG for rear guards. It is. Basically. basically. Especially like you might think that color blast is very big, but the thing is that don't forget this deck color charges like a hell bunch. Now this one I just put him in because I had an extra one but you really don't want to play this guy. Advanced guard, advanced guard, it advanced sucks. Advanced. Nah, I'm not even gonna go through skill, it just sucks. Don't play him. <laughs> Yeah, just, just play a third copy of it. Just play a third copy of Denial Griffin or whatever. Now, this one is an absolute unit of a G Guard. It's an OG up so long. Pretty sure this is like what? The first G Guard for Kagero to come out, if I remember. Wait, really? If yeah. I remember. It's like one of the first, yeah. if I remember. Yeah. But, anyways, his skill. Wait, oh, wait, 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 fly. <laughs> <laughs> wait, hold on. I need to confirm that. This is. Oh, FC. Never mind. Uh, what is this? Where is this from? BT7 Dude! That Denial Griffin was the first Giga I used oh, to never mind. I am stupid Okay, <laughs> never mind. Okay, but basically his skill is Karma Blast 1 and he gets plus 10k shield for every open rear guard circle on your opponent's field So let's say, I don't know, you're going up against DP or something and they only their Vanguard is stacked as hell Just drop this guy down, that's like a 65k uh, guard Yeah And I would play two of them Again, if I can find it, I have a lot of missing pieces so, but you can stack this if you're up against, I don't know, yeah, some... But, uh, but I mean like, usually players, if, if players do know Kanjiro, then I probably feel their feel before, the, you know, having this. Exactly. Yeah. But let's say you're up against Gold Paladins or Royals, which uses Excel Circles, not Royals, I'm dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Gold Paladins, uh, they're most likely gonna call their units onto the Excel Circles. So they'll probably have an empty back row, which also adds to this guy. So let's say you can defeat Flare with him and that's plus 30k to this guy's shield. If not, if you're up against a deck that doesn't call much, this is just a really nice card to have for guard purposes. And that's basically all the units. Now I do want to enforce that. Please go force 2 in this deck. Don't go force 1 and be a dumbass. <laughs> don't be the right? don't, don't be a Don't be a, don't be a dumbass. Okay. Now to go through some combos <laughs> we have here. You say this is your main right unit. Main right. Let's, let's have this is your striker. So most of the time, you wanna go with striker first and reserve your hand cards for the next turn. Then just pop across as an 18k base, three crit for three attacks, which is really nice. <laughs> and the the end skill basically says. Um, when you discard, the first skill is discard 3 from hand and it plus 10k. So after your first attack, it's literally at 28k each time. Mm -hmm. And with the amount of times you drive track with this, you're most likely gonna sack at least one trigger. So doing this on your first great three turn puts a shit ton of pressure onto your opponent, which is really nice. Indeed. And then your opponent can't do shit for the next turn, yes. which is. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Yeah, oh yeah, wait, do you wanna explain how like Oh wait, never mind. I can't I have a thought. Do you wanna explain how like Foreign Cannon puts back cards? Wait, does do I, oh, yeah. does Norin Cannon need you to put back uh specifically like overlock or any card? No, you just put out any old, any normal unit, right? Any normal unit. Yeah. That yeah. means whoa, you yeah, have recycle. a conro, yeah you can recycle conro. Uh, okay. You have whatever the crap else. Right. Yeah. Okay. So let's say um, you have your card row on your second turn and your opponent's dealt you one damage. What you can do is you car bus, put that card row away, and then just get your great one, whatever. Then the next turn, you can call this guy down, car bus one again, then send back that card row. 
So let's say you so you can draw and do that starter corner again mm -hmm. and then search out usually any great one. Yep. If not what you usually do you send back your overlords back to deck. Yeah. Mainly or, mainly mainly the end because you need to actually use You actually use the end. Yeah. Or if you want send back your counter charge corner for future plays. Yeah, I'm a mm. yeah. You wanna you wanna explain shines? Or shot, like any combo for shot. Mm. Honestly right, this deck, I don't even know what to say for combos. There's literally no combo. You literally just place cards <laughs> and just like go hampered. Like I, I don't know what to say. Right, it, on paper, this deck should not work this well, but it does. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I don't yeah, know this why. This makes no sense. Like, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it the player? Is it the player <laughs> himself? I don't know. I don't like, know. It's I literally know. all you do. Right, this dude. Swing three times for three crit each. Like each attack. And destroy your opponent. Yeah. I mean, like you don't. Uh, do, wh why? Uh, would you play Old the Cross? Would you play Old the Cross? Why we don't play Old the Cross is because the new Lian for his second ability, which is discard three. Oh no, fourth ability. Sorry, is you need four or less hand cards, which is why we play the new the Cross. Mm -hmm. But I guess you can play an Old the Cross if you want to, because the second skill you have to discard three anyways. Yeah. And why we play the old the cross is because when you're in Legion, only the end is the one minusing drive. So you can swing three times with six drives in total. Mm -hmm. And again with your over trigger in deck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, game over, it's, it's game over. very scary. Yeah. Uh, although although I do want to say playing all the cross, a lot of people do play all the cross. Like at one copy. Or three copy and then they take one copy. It's also nice to send back your triggers back to deck. But with this with this uh deck build that I've done, you don't usually go below four hand cards. Yeah, you actually you actually don't. I don't know how that's not that's not possible with like, this deck. Exactly. I've overlord you should go below, but with this deck I have I have found the ultimate cheat strategy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's basically it. Yes. That's very nice. Yes. As you can see, this is a very nice kind space. Anyways, this is the Overlord deck profile that I have from King Lama. What, what, what do you have to say? Any, any final words? Um, if you do play this deck, uh, be warned that you will have to burn your wallet just a tiny little bit. <laughs> um, it's not a lot. Just maybe like, I don't know, a couple hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very nice. Yes. See you next time.